Ah, die Bibliothek, the library. I was supposed to meet Simona here to talk a little bit more about fairy tales. I wonder where she is. Simone! Ah, da bist du, Simone. Hallo. Hallo. We're talking some more about fairy tales, and I had a couple more questions for you. Okay. Um, you know, there's so many fairy tales from Germany, and wasn't it these guys that made the fairy tales so popular? Who are they? It was indeed. They are the Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm. Okay. Would you like to talk a little bit more about the Brothers Grimm? Yes. Do you know something about them? I do. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a little bit of information. All right. So, die Gebrüder Grimm. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the Brothers Grimm in German. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, their names are Jakob and Wilhelm. Jakob and Wilhelm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what, what did they do exactly? Were they authors? Yes, they were authors, but they did other things as well. They were also linguists, researchers, and archivists. Oh, okay. Very academic men. Right. And in fact, they were professors at the University of Göttingen. Ah, professors. Well, that fits in well with your, what you're wearing here, this robe, and where we are in the Bibliothek, the library. You're telling me then that the Brothers Grimm were not only known for the fairy tales then. Mm -hmm. That's right. Though the fairy tales are very popular. Their book of fairy tales is called Kinder und Hausmärchen. Ah, mm -hmm. Kinder und Hausmärchen. Is that children's and household tales, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But they were known for other things as well? Yes, they produced other works. So they wrote down a lot of German legends and some mythology apart from the fairy tales. Mm -hmm. And they also created linguistic theories about the history and structure of the German language. Oh, all right. And, kind of tying into that, they started to write the Deutsches Wörterbuch. Okay, Deutsches Wörterbuch. Hmm, in English, that is German dictionary. Mm -hmm. Huh, and it says that that was started in 1838. Um, does that mean it wasn't finished in 1838? That is exactly what that means. Yes, it's a work in progress. It has many, many volumes to it. Okay, this is, I believe this is the, the first volume even. And we see the Brothers Grimm to the left there. So, in these volumes, they set out to make an etymological dictionary for the German language. That is, they made an attempt to record every single word in the German language and give its history. Exactly, yes. It was a huge undertaking. And today it continues on. There's currently a modern version of the Grimm's Wörterbuch, 32 volumes, online, put up by the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences. Obviously the Grimm's were known for a lot of things having to do with language and culture in Germany, but especially the fairy tales in Germany and internationally. They're known for that as well. Mm -hmm. How did they go about getting the material for these fairy tales? All right, well, let's go ahead and look at a few statements about how they collected the fairy tales. Mm -hmm. So why don't you do try to determine which one of these statements is false? Okay, the first one. The Grimm brothers wandered through the woods and collected their stories from the common folk. Okay. Many of the stories came from books. Okay. Many of the stories came from educated friends and acquaintances. 
All right, and the last one? They made many substantial changes to the stories. Okay, so I'm supposed to decide which one of these is false. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm going to guess that it's the third one that the stories came from educated friends and acquaintances. Okay, well, let's see. The one that is false is turning orange here. Ah, the Grimm brothers wandered through the woods and collected the stories from the common folk. That is not true. That is not true, no. Ah. Uh -huh. That might be the image that a lot of people have. Right. But the brothers were professors, and so they had access to a lot of information. Let's talk about the other statements a little bit. Okay. So they had extensive libraries. Mm hmm And their publication, their collection of fairy stories, was not the first one to exist. It was just the first one to come out of Germany. They already had access to several other collections of fairy tales. So they were able to, re to refer to those other books and mm -hmm. kind of bring it all together? Yes. Okay. And then the next point is that they had a, a lot of friends and acquaintances from university circles and people, mm -hmm. educated people, that they also were able to get those materials from? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the people that they knew, the people who they knew would have been people like them from the university who would have heard fairy tales as children or from other acquaintances. All right. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, changes to the stories? They actually changed the, the fairy tales? They, they did. They changed the fairy tales quite a bit. In fact, it's a lot like what happens today with, for example, Disney versions of fairy tales. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Dis Disney has done a lot of the fairy tales. Cinderella. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. And a lot of people today consider the Grimm's fairy tales to be very violent, especially in comparison with those Disney tales. But mm -hmm. the original material was even more so. Hmm. So why did they, they do that? Why did they make uh, a violent story less violent uh, so that there'd be less blood and guts and whatever mm -hmm. story they were telling? Well, they wanted to make the stories for children. So they had to, they had to tone everything down a little bit and also put in lessons, yeah. okay. morals for the stories. Morals for the stories. To teach. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, Simone, we've talked about the Brothers Grimm, and that's uh, such an important part of um, how fairy tales became so popular in Germany and how they became known around the world. So, vielen Dank. Ja, bitte schön.